Um, in the previous video, uh, introducing different anti-differentiation or integration, we saw that if we've got dy by dx is ax to the n, then to go back to the original function, we, ha uh, we would increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, and add an arbitrary constant. So we'd get ax to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. So go back and have a look at that if, you, if you're not sure about that. And we also had this other notation for expressing exactly the same thing, which was to say, I could just say that the integral of ax to the n with respect to x is equal to ax to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. So we're going to look now at um, some further examples of this sort of thing. So, um, for example, if I have the integral of 7x to the 5 plus 4x to the 9 with respect to x, uh, how will we do this? Well, we know when we differentiate, uh, we can differentiate term by term, so it follows that we can also integrate term by term as long as each of the terms is of this form. So I can take each of these functions, so 7x to the 5, I'm going to increase the power to 6, keep my 7, and divide by the new power, which is 6, uh, and then for the same for the next one, and then, so I'm going to get increase the power by 1 to 10, and divide by the new power, which is 10, and add on my arbitrary constant. And if we can simplify this, we will. I prefer to write my fractions like this. 4 over 10 becomes 2 fifths, and there we go, that's our final answer. Anything of this form will differentiate to give this, and if I also had some other information about the function, say, okay, I want to say which function has this gradient function and passes through a certain point, then I might also be able to work out c, but here we just use that plus c to represent um, the fact that that's a family of curves. Okay, here's another one then, and I want to integrate 5x to the 4 minus 2x cubed plus x plus 3 with respect to x, my answer on a new line. Uh, so increase the power by 1, that becomes x to the 5, still got my 5, and divide by the new power of 5, so the 5's cancel and we're just left with x to the 5. Here we get minus 2, increase the power by 1 to 4, divide by the new power. Uh, and again, there's a bit of cancellation here, we'll do that in a second. x, well x is just x to the 1, so I'm going to add here uh, x squared over 2, increase the power, divide by the new power, and 3, again, well, 3 we know integrates to 3x because we're just saying okay what function has constant gradient 3 and we know that's the straight line 3x uh, if you want to you know we could also think about 3 as being 3 times x to the 0 so we increase the power from 0 to 1 and get 3x to the 1 and divide by the new power which is 1 but of course uh, x to the 1 is just x and dividing by 1 uh, keeps it the same so that gives us 3x so you, know, you can think this is a bit of a special case, if you like, in how we think about it, but it does fit in to the pattern. Um, and then we have our plus c for the arbitrary constant, so we just tidy this up. We get x to the 5, uh, 2 over 4 is a half, so minus 1 half x to the 4, plus 1 half x squared, plus 3x, plus c. So you know, once you can do this with one term, you can do it with lots of terms, you just do it uh, over and over again. Okay, so time for a harder one then. I've got the integral of root x plus 1 over x squared dx, and hopefully not too much of a surprise what we're going to do here. When we differentiated these, we first needed to turn them into index form, and we're going to have to do exactly the same here. So I'm going to say that this is equal to the integral of x to the 1 half, because that's what root x is, and 1 over x squared is x to the minus 2. And this is all with respect to x still. Now I can just apply the rules here, so I'm going to increase the power by 1 here and get x to the 3 over 2, and divide by the new power. I wouldn't usually recommend writing it down exactly like this, but I'm going to do it just for now, um, because I've got a fraction in a fraction here. Um, we'll simplify it at the next line. x to the minus 2, increase the power by 1 to give x to the minus 1, divide by the new power, and add on a constant. So. Uh, you've got to be pretty confident with your fractions and things as always here. Dividing by 3 over 2 is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. Uh, so this is 2 thirds x to the 3 over 2. And really, I think you should probably just write this line down uh, before writing this one down, uh, if you can at all, because this is very messy. We don't like this. You can go wrong too easily. 
but if you need to do it to start off with do it but this is our aim two thirds x to the three over two and then we've got um plus x to the minus one uh, divided by minus one so that minus one we just come out here and that's minus x to the minus one plus c now if we wanted to we could uh put this back into the form a bit more like this so we could say this is two thirds times uh well it's the square root of x cubed minus one over x plus c and again knowing how your indices and thirds works really important here worth making the point there's nothing special about x you know if it's if i've got t's in here and it's with respect to t it would it all works the same i could have any letter in here as long as this matches up to the letter in here as we discussed in the first video uh, that's what matters if i had another constant in there in there like a uh you know and it wasn't a here that would just be treated as a constant um we'll rewrite these this is the key root of t so this is t to the one third uh seven t cubed just as it is so i'm going to increase the power of t by one to get t to the four thirds divide by the new power which means multiplying by the reciprocal because it's a fraction so three quarters t to the four thirds plus now seven uh, incre uh increase the power by one divide by the new power plus c and there we're done before we move on it's worth just looking at this one the integral of one over x with respect to x this is a special case uh, of integration and uh, if we try to write this as a power it would be x to the minus one with respect to x it looks okay so far until we try to apply the rule which says increase the power by one because increasing it by one gives x to the zero and now i've got to divide by that new power and i get divide by zero so this is uh we, don't, we need the plus c because it's gone wrong but this is an error you know dividing by zero is something we can't do so uh, this is a special case you know this isn't just uh, i can't say this is just undoing the process here um because uh none of the derivative examples we had before would ever get to x to the minus one i've had x to the zero and then i was differentiating it that's when we think of just like a constant i say three uh, goes to three x so you know if i'm differentiating sorry excuse me uh, when i differentiate three it goes to zero uh you know and i'm thinking of that as the case of x to the zero so um i multiply by zero and get zero uh there's no uh you know and then and then maybe reduce the power by one and get naught x to the minus one but of course that's not that's not there because it's just naught times it so there is no case that gives us x to the minus one when we differentiate something like this so the answer here uh, is actually a function that you'll meet a lot later on uh in the course which is called the logarithm of x but um, we'll come back to that much later okay okay one last question find the curve that passes through 2 3 with dy by dx equals 1x squared plus 3x so we need to here um, we're, we're going to be able to find out the value of c in this one because we know a point that it goes through so if we rewrite this first in index form we get x to the minus 2 plus x to the 1 third so increasing the power by 1 is x to the minus 1 divided by minus 1 and dividing by the new power sorry increase the power by one to get x to the four thirds divide by the new power um, so that's three quarters x to the four thirds plus c um, so we can tidy this up a little bit let's say let's rewrite this as we can as minus one over x plus three quarters times the cube root of x to the four plus c and now we know that the curve passes through the point 2 3 so when x is 2 y is 3 so I've got 3 equals minus 1 half plus 3 quarters times the cube root of 2 to the 4 and 2 to the 4 is um, 16 so um, so we can use this to work out the value of c it hasn't turned out particularly nicely as I often put something in uh, like that so three uh, plus a half gives us seven over two so I need seven over two minus three quarters times the cube root of 16 uh, and that's going to be the value of C so we could work that out in the calculator or we could just leave that uh, as the as the final answer 
So my final answer here, so save me writing it out again, will be um, this line here, but with C replaced by this. So I'll have plus 7 over 2 minus 3 quarters times the cube root of 16. It is possible to simplify this down a little bit, but let's leave it uh, at that.